I'm gonna try removing buttons from my camera in the middle of a real shoot with professional actors. Because if plants get stronger in a harsh environment, maybe I can too. This T3, right? It's been with me for like 10 years now, I think. I've literally grown up with it. So I feel, I feel kind of bad torturing it. I really hope I don't have to take this camera apart because I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to electronics. I really hope I can get this back together. No one needs all four hour keys, come on. I don't want to risk taking the camera apart any more than this. I'm already way outside my comfort zone. So let's see if I can put the camera back together. Just quickly, I'd like to say thanks to Hollyland for sponsoring this video with their Lark Max wireless microphone system. I've been using it to record everything in this video, but more on that later. I've got the camera back together. Sure, it took about 45 minutes and there are definitely some pieces left over. Hopefully they're not too important. Let's see if it'll turn on. Here we go. Hey. The T3i lives on just with a few less buttons. Now, this camera is already gonna be much harder to use and the remaining buttons are quite important. So I'm gonna to have to think very carefully about which ones to lose next. A few days later, we had sorted a location, actors and a script. So once everyone arrived and got into costume, I noticed that Kate's outfit looks difficult to hide a microphone in. The easiest way to set up the Lark Max is to use the magnet to attach the transmitter and then flip it around if I don't want to see the microphone on camera, hiding the magnet with another layer of clothing. But this character's costume didn't have any extra layers, so I taped a lavalier mic at the front and routed the cable to the back where the transmitter was small enough to magnetically attach to the fabric, completely hidden. The Hollyland receiver attaches to the camera, and although my lovely T3i doesn't have a headphones jack, the Lark Max does, so I was able to check that everything sounded good. I used stereo mode so I could hear Dewey's mic on the left channel and Kate's on the right, meaning I could capture both of their voices separately with my old T3i without hiring a sound person. But just as we started filming, I noticed something that I hadn't planned for. I thought I could get by without some of the camera's arrow keys, since I could get to the bottom of the menu by going past the top until it loops around. But this box, which lets me magnify the screen to check that the shot is in focus, that box doesn't loop around. So there's no way for me to move it to the left or bottom of the screen. So anytime I wanted to focus on the left side of the screen, I had to move the camera until the actor was in the box, set focus, and then move the camera back. Bit of a waste of time, not ideal. Also, I kept reaching for the zoom out button, which I'd already removed, but there was a simple workaround for that. If I kept pressing the zoom in button, eventually it would reset the magnification. No problem at all. Before long, it was time for me to lose my next button, and I knew there wouldn't be enough time to disassemble the camera again, so I had an idea. I think this was the first time I've ever held up a shoot so that I could spend some time making my camera worse. I did wonder if the actors thought I was the least professional person they'd ever worked with. You're so wrong. But I think if I kind of use... Ow, oh, that's hot. <laughs> now that button was covered in glue, it was impossible to change the aperture setting. So each time the sun came out from behind the cloud, I had to use an ND filter or change the ISO to adjust the exposure. The aperture was stuck. Now on a regular shoot, as the sunlight becomes more orange later in the day, I would adjust the camera's white balance by pressing the Q button so the footage doesn't get too orange. But after I blocked access to the Q button, my white balance was stuck, 
so I need to try and fix it in post if the light changed color at all. Now, by default, the audio settings on my camera were set to medium, which meant that no matter how good my microphone was, there would be some hiss in the background. But fortunately, before the shoot, I had used my menu button to turn the camera's levels way down, and then I made the lock max louder to minimize the hiss. So if the actors spoke too loudly, the sound might distort. So between takes, I'd been in the menus to check that their voices didn't go past that minus 12 on the meter. But when I lost the menu button, that cut me off from lots of functions, most importantly, the audio settings. And on the T3i, that's the only place you can see the audio meters to make sure that there's no distortion. But fortunately, the Lock Max had a backup recording. Because clearly, I don't mind making my camera worse on purpose, but I wasn't gonna take any chances with the audio. Sound is just too important. Since I could store backup recordings on the transmitter itself, I had peace of mind. If I used the wrong audio setting on my camera, or even if I accidentally pulled out this cable, I could recover the sound from the backup file stored in the transmitter. All I had to do was tap record on the receiver and the transmitter would store up to 14 hours of 24-bit audio as a backup. Now, I'll be honest, it was a while before I had the courage to lose any more buttons. It was difficult enough having no aperture control, no menu button, and when you're trying to keep the shot in focus and move the camera smoothly, all with just the tiniest screen, it's easy to miss something. So we often had to watch the clips back after a take, and since I only had half the arrow keys, if I want to exit, I can't just go left, I have to go all the way around. So that's definitely been slowing us down. But eventually, during the last hour of the shoot, I realized that I couldn't hold off any longer. I plucked up the courage to cover the ISO button. Okay. And the button which let me magnify the screen to check focus. With those gone, I figured I may as well lose the arrow keys too, and the playback button as well. Why not? <laughs> this was truly bare bones filmmaking. A camera with just one button, the record button. What more do you need than that? This camera doesn't have a touch screen, so the only setting I could change was with this dial that controls the shutter speed. But I don't want to, I never change the shutter speed. <laughs> so. I felt like I'd gone from a luxury hotel with all the bells and whistles to being in a sleeping bag under the stars. And there was something kind of endearing about it. So as we worked our way through the last shots in the schedule, I was straining my eyes to try and check that everything was in focus on the tiny screen and just hoping that the light wouldn't change too much because I had no way of adjusting exposure. Yeah. Okay, so there's a lot of back and forth. Just It'll twice. Would you like her? After we wrapped, I was nervous to look through the footage. So I took the SD card out of the camera, put it in my laptop, and I had such low expectations considering the missing buttons and all the time I'd spent working around them. But I was kind of pleasantly surprised. I was fairly happy with my camera work. It seemed like most of the shots were just about in focus. The lighting, not so much. Some shots definitely turned out better than others. The actors were brilliant, and I think Tiara did a great job directing. And I'm really happy with the audio from our shoot. There was no wireless interference. Well, you do it then. I've literally done everything else. And the location was pretty quiet, so I didn't get to use the noise cancellation feature. Let's try it now. This is without noise cancellation, and this is with noise cancellation. Here's another test right next to the fridge. Noise cancellation off, noise cancellation on. So as frustrating as it was shooting on a partially broken T3i, after the whole day of filming, we only used 23 gigabytes of footage and just half the power from my USB battery. So that's a nice benefit from using such an old camera. I'll be honest though, I wanted a challenge and that's exactly what I got. I'm definitely looking forward to using a normal camera again with the luxury of all four arrow keys. And look, the glue didn't destroy my camera. So thank you to Hollyland for sponsoring this video. I've used the Lark Max for this entire project, either connecting it to my camera, my phone, or my laptop, which is nice for screen recording and video calls. There's a link in the description if you'd like to find out more about the Lark Max, but thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.